Our first speaker provided a string of hashtags as a form of a bio. Hashtag arts player, hashtag community player, hashtag poker player, and hashtag YNWA, which makes us think that at a minimum she's a Liverpool football fan. But no matter what, let's count her in. Please welcome Angie Jelena. Good evening. I'm going to thank David Plouffe now for this invitation, because depending how it goes, I might not feel the same way <laughs> in six minutes and 40 seconds. So I think I've been trying to put my hand up and say, count me in since I was a little kid. And in my world, and what we'll talk about today, that was mostly about count me into play. As early as I was at age three, they tell stories of me walking around chasing my papa with a deck of cards in my hand going, gin, papa, gin. So it's probably not surprising that at this point in my life, I'm counted in on this global poker index, where as you can see, I'm 681st in all-time Canadian poker player winnings. <laughs> Don't get too excited, really, but it is something to write home about if you come from the home I do. So that's my mom on the right. That's her mom, my nanny, scooping that pot. <laughs> and I realized as I was putting this together that it was the women in my life that I learned a lot from in terms of how to play poker. My nanny was the sweetest, meekest, Nova Scotia woman you'd ever meet till you put a deck of cards in her hand. <laughs> now I learned a lot from my, the men in my life, my dad, my brother, my uncles. They taught me the game, they taught me strategy, they taught me how to play. But it's the women, like my grandma Ethel here, who taught me to be fearless, who taught me to say, yeah, you can be at the table with the boys, you can play cards, you do it. And so I did. I immersed myself in poker. Now, some of you might be here going, poker's a game about money, and poker's a game about gambling, and well, you know, a little bit of gamble, a little bit of money, it's how we keep track. But really, it's about making good decisions, and I just immersed myself in it. How do I make good decisions? How do I do this? How do I learn? And I learned with friends. And one of the things that happened is for recreational poker players like myself, we have a holy grail. It's called the World Series of Poker Main Event. And that became my focus, a little bit of an obsession. And so I thought, OK, that's what I'm going to do. And so I started to play. I played women's events, I played in Calgary, I played in Las Vegas, I played in Los Angeles, I played in Dominican Republic, I just played. And I studied, and I played, and I studied, and I played, and all in an effort to get comfortable at the table, to, to find out who I was outside of reading my books and watching videos and playing. I often said I got my best poker lessons at the table, but they were a bit expensive because I kept losing. <laughs> so I started to take lessons so that I could become comfortable and I, I could hold my own and figure out who I was as a poker player. And then something started to happen. Um, I had my first big cash here in Calgary, probably around 2008, 2009. I won $30,000. It was like crazy. Wow. And then I got this like 12-foot banner in 2011 that said, I was a poker queen of Las Vegas. <laughs> I know. Um, and so I continued. I, I got to a point where um, I was running a series, and we were sending the top point getters to play the World Series of Poker. And eventually, by 2013, I won my way to the World Series of Poker. So at that point, I'd been studying poker a lot. Then I realized, okay, how am I going to do this? It's like a $10,000 buy-in. This is a lot of pressure. <laughs> so I got a poker coach, or I got a mind coach. And this mind coach, he coached MMA fighters and poker players. And he helped me understand confidence and how not to be intimidated by young men in hoodies. Um, <laughs> because there's a lot of them at the World Series of Poker. And when you're learning to play and you're a woman, um, the best poker players are aggressive and assertive. And we're not generally told that that's OK. And so he helped me get that sense so that I could play a $10,000 buy-in over 10 days, if I got to the end, and be OK. So here I am, I think, in my very first World Series of Poker. Someone sent me this shot, said, I saw you on TV, um, <laughs> walking the hallway into the big room, day one. 
there was a lot of firsts on that day, not the least of at the break. I made it to, there's like 3,000 people, I made it to the washroom in five minutes and there was a lineup of 200 men waiting to get in. Come on, where do you see that ever? At the table, I tried to fit in. I tried to do everything I could to make it look like I belonged. My first day, this man sat down, and he, and he wel welcome to the table, ma'am. I said, thank you very much. He goes, now, did your husband buy you in? <laughs> and I thought about all kinds of things, at which point I said, well, cheaper than shopping. <laughs> <laughs> now, these, these, are, these gals are my friends. They're my poker friends. And they make up a contingent of what I call the rail. We all have a rail. Those are those people who are just supporting you the whole time. They're bringing you drinks. They're letting you know what's going on. They're bringing you batteries when your phone is about to die. And sometimes up here in Calgary, they're also up at midnight sending me texts saying, in case you don't know, you're 11th. I'm like, of course I know where I am, but thank you. <laughs> and they're so excited. And I'm sending things back and forth to them and them to me. And um, they're sharing in the dream. This is a picture of me at the 2015 World Series of Poker, where after four days and 48 hours of playing poker, I made the money. I got a cute little hat that said, you're in the money. We were down to about 1,000 players. I had friends there taking my picture. I had friends going crazy on Facebook, being so excited, and it was amazing. Now, when you play poker, you can sit at the table. You never know who you're with. You can be with a superstar, Daniel Negreanu, top one or two players in the world. Um, playing a $1, $2 game. I can be sitting next to hedge fund bankers. I could be sitting next to um, a gang member. I could be sitting next to a mom of four. I've sat next to all of them and talked with all of them. Um, and the one thing that happens is if you have the money to buy in, whether it's a dollar game or it's a $100 game or it's a $10,000 game, once you're there and you've got the chips, you're part of that game. You're part of that team. You're part of that culture and you're telling stories. These guys on the left, they're some of my local tribe. They're the people who tell me stories. There's Cowboy, there's Jeet, there's AJ who's here tonight. And we talk poker all the time. So poker's been a great part of my life. Um, and if any of you are looking for a great game and you want someone to come and help you out, just call me, just count me in. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>